As Michael Jackson might have said once upon a time, Bob Iger is a smooth criminal. Even when confronted with clear conflicts with Walt Disney himself, Bob Iger will find a way to weasel out of it. One thing he's not weaseling out of though, folks, Bob Iger, CEO of the Walt Disney Company, is ready to admit that even Disney is unlikely to ever achieve what they did over the last 20 years at the box office. Things are not looking rosy for the mouse, and no, there's not a bright horizon ahead. Today, we're doing part four of Breaking Bob. And in light of the latest audit findings out of the Walt Disney World Resort and the Reedy Creek Improvement District, let's just say that parsing out Bob's words is more important than ever. Hello folks, welcome back to the place where we shine light on the entertainment industry. In doing so, we explain it and we keep you ahead of the culture curve. We love doing so. It is an honor as always. Thank you for sharing your time. If you would like to go ahead and do so, consider clicking the like button as we now get into part four of breaking down the big summit the New York Times held where Bob Iger got up on stage and, well, stuck his foot in his mouth over and over and got the richest man in the world jumping all over him. But one of the things that jumps out at us is that Bob Iger also seems to have admitted that the Walt Disney Company is unlikely to achieve what it has achieved in the past. That's interesting, and we wonder why a man such as Iger would ever admit it. Well, let's dive into his commentary right now, and we'll give you the commentary of what's true, what's untrue, and reading between the lines. Now, let's also put it in perspective. We set the bar so high. Year after year after year, we had the best performance in the business probably for a decade. And I'm not sure another studio will ever achieve some of the numbers that we achieved with. Which is to say, he doesn't think Disney will. Didn't do a billion dollars in global box office. We were disappointed. That's an unbelievably high standard. And I think we have to get more realistic. A couple of the. Notice that he says that if they didn't make a billion dollars in the past, on a movie, it was a disappointment. The price of movie tickets today is something like 40% higher than it was pre-pandemic. So yeah. it should be much easier to hit those billion dollar marks, yet they don't. It should be far more disappointing. Films you mentioned, by the way, which is interesting about kind of the new world order, did okay at the box office. Elemental's a good example, about 500 million at the box office. Elemental lost between 100 and $150 million at the box office. By the way, to some studios, that would be a gigantic hit. When Disney has a $500 million film, it's a, it's a failure. Ah! It's a failure if you lose money, Bob. Well, you spend $200 million. To, what do you spend on Elemental? It's like $200 million, right? $200 million, so, yeah, you spend minimum $200 million. $100 million minimum on the advertising. Come on, man. Of course it's a failure. These other studios aren't spending $200 million to make a, a, a movie. They're spending $100 million, if that. Yeah, Minions on, cost yeah. 90, we believe. Which is interesting. Right. But then it went on it went on Disney Plus and had massive consumption. Mike, how much money do they make from uh consumption? Consumption. Yeah, yeah. He says he says Elemental went to Disney Plus and there was massive consumption. And so that makes it okay. None. Oh yeah. That doesn't equal money at all, does it? Zero. Huh. Zero. How about that? So that says something. Maybe people didn't perceive it was the kind of film they needed to see in the theaters, but they certainly, when they discovered it on Disney Plus, enjoyed it. What Bob Iger is saying here, Pixar folks, listen closely to what we have to say to you. Bob Iger is saying that the folks out there, in his estimation, didn't think Elemental was worth spending money on, but if it was free, it was fine to play in the background on their television for a little bit while they ate dinner in another room. Uh, let me ask you about this, about franchises and the value of IP. I we're going to wrap up with this next section, folks. Big time question about Walt. This is the point where I want to show you that Iger still has it to some degree in terms of charisma, even if he totally disagrees with Walt. If he has a fundamental difference with, with Walt Disney himself, he still knows how to schmooze the crowd. I don't think actually most people have ever read this letter, so I'm going to read it aloud if I could. Uh, this was a letter written in 1966 by Walt Disney, the man himself. It was two months before dying from lung cancer. He was a heavy smoker. And he wrote this to shareholders about what he said makes us tick here at the Disney organization. He said, many people have asked, why don't you make another Mary Poppins? Well, by nature, I'm a born experimenter. To this day, I don't believe in sequels. 
I can't follow popular cycles. I have to move on to new things. There are many new worlds to conquer. As a matter of fact, people have been asking us to make sequels ever since Mickey Mouse first became a star. We have bowed only on one occasion to cry, uh, the cry to repeat ourselves. Back in the 30s, the Three Little Pigs was an enormous hit, and the cry went out, give us more pigs. I could not see how we could possibly top pigs with pigs. But we tried, and I doubt whether any one of you reading this can name the other cartoons in which the pigs appeared. We didn't make the same mistake with Snow White. When it was a huge hit, the shout went up for more dwarfs, top dwarfs with dwarfs, why try? Right now, we're not thinking about making another Mary Poppins. We never will. But they did. Perhaps it'll be- And it didn't go over well. The other ventures nope. with equal critical and financial success, but we know we cannot hit a home run with the bases loaded every time we go to the plate. We also know the only way we can even get to first base is by constantly going to bat and continuing to swing. What would Walt think now? <laughs> but watch what Iger does here. If, you know, we, we're, we're not pleased with what he's done to the company. We're not pleased with how he's treated others. We're not pleased with the programs he's uh, instituted at Disney. But if you doubt for a moment that this man is poor in terms of Spinning through a question. This is how he got to the point where he is. Pay attention to the answer. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk to him later. I'll, maybe I'll let you know. I, know. Um, I actually think about that a lot. We, we um, About five years ago, we put Walt's back office back together again as it existed the day he passed. We had saved everything that was in it, and there had been photographs. Except his shower, he got that one. Taken of everything, including the order of the books on the shelves. And we decided, kind of as, out of respect for him, we would just return it to what it looked like. Then, interesting, you mentioned he was a smoker. It's filled with ashtrays. Wherever you go, there's an ashtray. And every once in a while, I go in, not to smoke, by the way, I don't smoke. But I go into his office just to, just to, to sort of feel the presence. I know that sounds a little weird, but it's kind of a nice way to... Notice he hasn't answered the question. This is the skills yep. of someone with, with charisma. Still no answer to the question. It's just storytelling. Relax and, and, uh, and appreciate the legacy of the company. And the first thing you really realize if you study Walt is that Walt was unbelievable at adapting to change. First of all, he loved technology. He loved to use technology. And he also knew that the world was not a static place. That was true for his theme parks. That was true for his movies, for television, everything that he did. He was a true innovator. An innovator is someone who never stands still. Now, when that quote, I think you at one point yep. read it to me, and I think at the, we had just done the sequel to Mary Poppins. <laughs> I thought, wow, this is good timing. Um, I think... Uh, I don't want to apologize for making sequels. Some of them have done extraordinarily well, and they've been good films too. I think you have The reason, folks, the context for this, the reason that this is being asked is because Bob Iger has essentially said two different things at two different times very recently. One, that they're, be they're going to become an assembly line of sequels, and two, that they're not going to make as many sequels. So go figure. So that's the reason for the question. There has to be a reason to make them. You have to have a good story. And often the story doesn't hold up to, is not as strong. That's why we're getting Inside Out 2, where we're going to introduce Anxiety as a lovable, plushable, merchandisable character for your kids to hug and love inside their crib. It's the original story, that can be a problem, but it just has to have a, a reason. You have to have a reason to make it beyond commerce. There has to be, an, it has to, it has to be an artistic reason to make it. And that, folks, may be the answer for why we have Disney Plus, because it's clearly not a commercial reason they could have been licensing these things out on Netflix instead or somewhere else. Disney Plus has not turned a profit, probably won't turn a profit for a very long time and definitely won't dig out of the hole that it's in. And Bob Iger is in a hole as well. All right, folks, that's a wrap for today. We have enjoyed doing these series of videos. Future uh, parts when it comes to Breaking Bob are going to be uh, playing out on That Park Place, the YouTube channel. So if you would like to continue this series, make sure to go to That Park Place, the YouTube channel, and follow along there as they begin to release Parts 5, Part 6, and who knows, maybe even a Part 7. There was a lot that Bob Iger said, and much of it needs to be dissected, especially in light of what is coming out now out of Central Florida, out of that independent audit that shows that the Walt Disney Company may have been acting in one of those corrupt ways we have ever seen within an American corporation. Governmental capture. Uh, those are things you don't hear. It's unprecedented. So follow along over there, folks. And before you head on over to that park place, make sure to click the like button, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the 
algorithms, it's the notification bell. Don't forget to share this thing out on the social medias, too. We, we surely do appreciate that. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. The Pro Show, live, is moving. New time, folks, new time. This is coming out, uh, the Pro Show Live, coming out on Tuesdays now at noon Eastern. You can check us out there. We'll go from noon to 3 p.m. every single Tuesday. Filling that slot in, for those of you who love Midnight's Edge, that was vacant on Tuesdays. Now we'll be there for you. All right, folks, that's it. We've had a great one. We've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your time. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun.